Anime is big, anime is explosive, and above all else, anime is magical. Hey everyone, I'm Laser Kid, and today I'm going to talk about how I got into anime. For a lot of people my age, this story goes a little something like this. I turned into Cartoon Network and saw Dragon Ball Z, and life was never the same! And you know what? Dragon Ball is important to my anime journey as well. But it wasn't the start for me, and I feel like what was is an underappreciated gem. Now in fairness, I'm old for a lot of the circles I hang in, and I grew up in the 80s and 90s. There was anime around me before I knew what anime was, and I'm not talking about Pokémon. As a child, I absolutely watched Voltron and Robotech with delight, but I had no idea these were Japanese shows being westernized for mass audiences. So while they can technically count as my first anime, given that I would not have differentiated them from other hits of my youth such as He-Man or Thundercats, I really can't count them as my first anime. Given my fondness for 80s action cartoons, and as aforementioned, even seeing anime of a sort that way, one might think such was my gateway, but you'd only be half right. The 90s was a bit of a dark time for an action cartoon fan. Sure we had some, but they were mostly based on comic books, Batman and X-Men come to mind. This led me to a lifelong love of actual comic books, which as a kid I'd get at a local Walgreens when my parents took me there. Ah yes, times were different back then. The year was 1994, and I saw a conspicuous comic book from Malibu Comics. It was the third issue, but I didn't care. I bought it anyway. And this, my friends, was the odd case of a comic book adaptation of an anime. Something I've never seen since. I don't mean manga, by the way. It was an actual American comic book in full color drawn by American artists. I was able to finagle the second issue out of a local comic book store, but to this day I've never found the first or fourth and final issue. I've looked into many factoids about this anime, but I've never been able to figure out how this comic book adaptation came into being. However, my desire to find out the rest of the story being unable to get the rest of the comics led me to an advertisement at the end of the comic. An advertisement for the VHS release of the anime from US Manga Corps. The anime that introduced me to the medium was of course Project Echo, and my mind was blown. Project Echo is a 1986 comedy anime feature film. Ironically enough, initially conceived as part of the Cream Lemon Hentai series directed by Katsuhiko Nishijima. Urban legend has it that the team was having too much fun animating the gags in the film, they forgot to animate the porn. I've never been able to find a reliable source for it, but I've always found it a hilarious anecdote if nothing else. Thirteen-year-old me had no idea about any of this, but I was able to find it at a local blockbuster video. God, I'm old. I was terrified my parents wouldn't let me rent it as it had a mild nudity sticker warning, but God bless my parents, they evaded that issue like pros. I should explain. My parents are very conservative, so really this could have gone down differently, and I may have had a more generic anime introduction later on in my life, but my folks rolled with it. Have you seen yourself in a mirror? was their question, which of course I answered yes, and then they said, don't worry about it. So I rented Project Echo. The film opens with the arrival of an alien spacecraft which grazes by some astronauts, further going into the Earth and crashing into Graviton City killing all of the residents and leaving a huge crater in its wake. We flash forward, and the Earth now has improved its space presence, with the space station far more advanced and what you'd expect for an anime series. It launches a defense ship, and then we cut to a newly rebuilt Graviton City, in which we learn it has been 16 years since the crash, and the city has been rebuilt around the crater. We meet our heroine, Aiko, waiting up for her first day of high school to, which of course, she is late for. Ah! I'm late for school! First day! I'm late! We shortly after meet Seiko, Aiko's best friend, who reminds her she is late. Aiko! You know what time it is? Hi! Yeah, I know! I'm coming now! I'll be right with you! Aiko shortly after they head out, grabs Seiko and takes off at a rapid, inhuman speed. Knocking through buildings and running into, and knocking over, a mysterious man who will become an important character later on. Eiko and Seiko introduce themselves to their new class, wherein Seiko shows herself to be quite scatterbrained. Hi everyone! It'll be great! When I say great, I mean great! Making new friends here! 
And then we meet Biko, an existing class member who immediately takes a shine to Seiko, but wants Eiko out of the picture. I've got to have that girl for myself, and I know how to get her. First, I get Eiko out of the way. Then I tell Mari to frighten her. I come to her rescue. She'll fall in my lap. And Eiko's history. We get more shots of the school and see pilotable mini mecha and rocket packs and other fun inventions. What proceeds is a series of gags and mini drama wherein Eiko and Biko fight over Seiko in increasingly ridiculous ways. Eiko using her intense strength, and Biko using her genius to build ever more elaborate mechanical monstrosities until she eventually builds herself a crazy battlesuit. The hijinks involved get very ridiculous, and the gags increase as well, to the point where Eiko takes Seiko to a horror movie. Starring Colonel Sanders. I'm not kidding. Shit! I ain't doing his dirty work no more! Uh... No! No! It's... It's... The Colonel! Ah! Ah! Keep away! Ah! All the while, the mysterious man Eiko bowled over seems to be watching after everything Eiko is doing, and is revealed to be an agent for an alien species. THE alien species of the spaceship that crashed years ago. Thereafter, they're missing Princess, who was on said spaceship 16 years ago. His commander, Captain Napolipolita, is a wine-obsessed man who is very pleased they have found the Princess. One of our operatives, put it through. This is operative DC138621S113, code name D. Go ahead. Captain? I ah! Captain, I believe our long search through the universe is over, and I have found the person we're looking for at last. Oh, really? You found her? I believe so. You're not certain? I cannot confirm with complete 100% certainty, but I estimate a probability of 80% at this moment in Earth time. Hmm. Report again when it's 100%. Right. This all hits a climax when Biko attacks Eiko in a ridiculous battlesuit that looks like a two-piece swimsuit. While this occurs, the aliens kidnap Seiko, who they believe to be their princess. Eiko and Biko are forced into a truce to save Seiko in a crazy action sequence of epicness. I want to make it clear this truce only lasts till we get Seiko back. Is that understood? I wanted the pleasure of finishing you off myself. Oh well, I can't have everything. Once they arrive on the alien spaceship, it is then revealed that all the aliens, including the mysterious man who is named D, and the captain are all women. The rescue is successful, but the alien spaceship crashes into the top of a PREVIOUS crash spaceship, and the movie ends with Biko waiting to challenge Eiko again as Eiko and Seiko head to school, surrounded by bits of wreckage that had fallen off the spaceship. The entire film is full of slapstick and gags, and yet also tons of action, and it won me over completely as a 13-year-old, and it's still very special to me. It does have three sequel films, and two OVAs to follow up with it, but honestly, while I do like them, they're nowhere near as awesome as the original film. I cannot recommend this anime movie enough, especially for all the references to other anime filled within. It's very old and a piece of a bygone era of anime, but it's still very fun, and thanks to Discotech Media, it is in print these days, and I cannot recommend giving it a try enough. As for me, 
I would go from watching Project Echo to renting a ton of anime afterwards from that same blockbuster video which had an entire section for it. And I would run into the 1995 broadcast of the original 13 episodes of Dragon Ball, which did become a huge part of my growing anime fandom. But it all started with a red-haired, super-powered schoolgirl fighting giant robots, her rival, and invading aliens to protect her best friend, and I will never forget it.